Tell Another One is brought to you by Mad Marco Enterprises. Show idea, concept, and design by Marco Liberati. Please enjoy the show. <laughs> Cheers. Tell us another one. A show with tall tales, jokes, and antidotes. And now, please welcome your host, Marco Liberati. Yeah. Right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, fantastic, beautiful, warm audience here. We're filming live today. So, uh, th- round of applause for the great audience that's here today. You guys are fantastic. Thank you. That is awesome. All righty. We've got a uh, fantastic show lined up for you guys. We've got uh, a full uh, half hour of entertainment for you. I guess I'll better start with a little story first. Um, you know, I'm finding, it, I'm finding it pretty hard. I'm struggling with COVID. You know, I'm actually in trouble with the law because of COVID. Uh, I'm getting sued. So, you know, greetings. You know, what are we doing these days for greetings now? I'm confused. I don't know what to do. You know, are we doing, uh, we're doing handshakes, we're doing fist bumps, we're doing elbows. Uh, you know, are we, are we doing the nods? We're doing the, the yeah, hey, one of those. I, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been a few years now with COVID and, and I'm confused and we're distancing and now things seem to be going back to normal. And, uh, and this is where the trouble started, you know. Uh, my auntie's come in for the kiss, I've gone for the elbow, broken <laughs> nose. So... Yeah, that's where we're at, people. And, uh, you know, it's okay because uh, I'm sure she'll forgive me in, uh, in 10, 15 years' time because she's Italian, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll be sitting down, we'll be making the bread, we'll be making the peas, we'll be having some dinner, and I'll be going, do you remember that time when, when this used to be mine before the lawsuit? <laughs> yeah. I did go to the doctors, so I went and got some proper sleeping pills. I uh, got them home and they had this big red warning label on them though. Said, must not be pregnant or breastfeeding, tick. Must not be on any other medication, tick. Must be over 65 years old. What? <laughs> I'm in my 30s. Mid 30s. <laughs> All right, late 30s. All right, I'm a week from 40, but still, like, how did the doctor mess that up so badly? Oh, it was bulk billing. Yeah, it's fair. But I, um, I do actually want to meet that one person who's over 65 and still breastfeeding. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Firstly, the kid would be like 40. Um, <laughs> Mum, I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, who's the cranky boy? Is Tony a cranky boy? Okay, Tony, you know what to do. Lie down on the ground. That's right. On the ground. <laughs> you over 65? Oh, well, here we go. It's this lady in the front row here. All right, you ready down there? You all ready? This will happen. All right, she unclips and unravels like a life raft. (laughs) She just waves it over until he latches on. (laughs) Puffs of powdered milk. Yanks the chain and falls back up again. <laughs> Origami crane. Whee! Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good. I've had such a busy week this week, honestly. Such a busy week. I had to um, help my mum while I was driving out there. I had to help her set up a new um, smartphone, right? She literally just got one. She's still been using one of those flip phones with snake on it, right? <laughs> like, she can't play it. But um, <laughs> the other day, she showed me the phone. And she's like, look, Lise, snake's in 3D now. (laughs) Oh, no, Mum, that's a dick pic. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That's why I was getting bigger. Hmm. I um, I don't know, but, like, I get this type of pressure from everyone. I don't matter, you guys, but, like, I get it's not just Mum. I do get it. I'm nearly 40, not married, no kids. But honestly, man, oh, can you back off, Grandma? 
Seriously, now she's getting on at me as well, right? Like every family gathering. My cousin's baby shower, she's like, oh, Lisa. <laughs> tick, tick, tick. <laughs> yeah, my brother's wedding. Oh, Lisa. <laughs> tick, tick, tick. Yeah, yeah, I repaid the favour at a granddad's funeral, so. <laughs> Ticking now, Beatrice. <laughs> you can enjoy it, she's still alive. <laughs> Did you guys ever get hit by your parents growing up? Oh, she <laughs> <laughs> The audience just woke up there. <laughs> you got hit. What did you, can I ask what you got hit with? Nutella. I mean, uh, Nutella? Wooden, wooden spoon. Wooden spoon. Oh, classic vintage. Vintage move. I like it. You're Greek, right? That explains it, yep. <laughs> Us ethnics, I consider myself, we're fans of the uh, child abuse. <laughs> I feel like you see all the, all, the, all the Aussies pulled back, the Greek ladies like, yeah, spoon, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Do you know what's the crazy thing about a wooden spoon? Did you know you can cook with it? It's nuts. It's like, I used to just wonder why we had this weapon in the kitchen for years. <laughs> By the way, can I just give a disclaimer? These are just jokes. Obviously, I don't believe you should hit kids. <laughs> but, um, you know, I got hit, so let me joke about it. And if you don't laugh, you're just furthering my trauma. <laughs> Plus, I'm brown, so if you don't laugh, that's a hate crime. <laughs> anyway, one of my, uh, one of my favorite. Oh, my mom, when, one time she hit me with a wooden spoon, and she hit me so hard, the spoon broke. And she was horrified at the low quality of the spoon. She's like, what kind of rubbish? And then she took the spoon replacement money out of my allowance. Like, this is evil, right? It's good shit. My favorite story of child abuse. <laughs> I was one of my friends, he was like eight years old, Singapore. He's hanging out in his kitchen. His dad rocks up behind him, just, uh, turns him around out of nowhere, just slaps him, pow. And the dad's like, oh, wrong uh, son. By the way, not sorry, wrong son, just, oh, wrong son. Like, he picked up the wrong drink. And then he went to go find the right son and slapped him twice for making him hit the wrong son. How good is that? I mean, there's a lot of therapy, but, you know, it made 16 people laugh. I think it's worth it. <laughs> uh, what floor are you on? Oh, um, penthouse, please. So what do you do in your spare time? It's hard to find spare time these days. Yeah, I blame the internet for that. You don't say much. Uh, I'll take the stairs. What floor do you live on? I don't live here. Having trouble finding friends? Call and meet a friend on 1300 13 hash 2 star 6 152 398 847. Go on, find a friend and have friends in 24 hours. Tell us another one. A show with tall tales, jokes and antidotes. And joining me on Joke Off is our guest uh, comedian today. Please welcome to the stage, Pradeepra Timmerman. I've got a few jokes back from the 80s. Uh, I'm not very good at old jokes, but I remember some that my auntie used to tell me. Uh, how do you get four elephants into a mini? How do you get four elephants into a mini? Two in the front, two in the back. <laughs> how do you hide elephants in a strawberry patch? How do, you hide, how do you hide elephants in a strawberry patch? Colour their toenails red. <laughs> Fantastic. I know. 
That's good. There was an elephant joke I remember. It was, uh, how do you eat an elephant? How do you eat, eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that same auntie that told me those jokes from before was an air hostess back in the 70s. And one time she had a very troublesome uh, customer, person, passenger on the plane, giving her a lot of grief. And uh, at some point he got on his high horse and he said to her, Madam, do you know who I am? And she turned around to the whole plane and she said, Excuse me, does anybody know who this man is? He seems to have forgotten his name. <laughs> We are going to have a great day. I packed a nice picnic lunch for you. So, you ready to eat? But well, don't just sit there. They can help me unpack. Look, I know you don't like coming here sometimes, but you can't sit inside on your bloody iPad all day. So, I've got your favourite sandwiches here. Thousands and millions. Let's hurry up and eat, so I go play on the swings. What's with the stone faces? effort I go to to make a nice picnic lunch and you can't even raise one finger to help me out. Very rude and very funny. Don't raise that finger at me again. What's got into you two girls today? Fine, just sit there and do nothing. I've got all this beautiful food here today and I'm going to eat it all by myself. When I get upset, I get hungry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just that when I get upset, I get angry. That's right, angry. Oh, wow, how cute. That's just so adorable. He makes such a loving father. I, I do try sometimes. Uh, my name's Henry. This is Patch, and this is Leah. I'm Penelope. Oh, why the stone faces. I say that all the time. <laughs> oh, what's the name of your dog? Uh, this is Monty. Oh, what do you think, girls? Do you like Monty? <laughs> Does he get any bigger? Monty's only a baby at the moment, but when he gets bigger, he's going to be this big. What type of breed is he? Oh, he's a very special designer breed. Monty is a bull mastiff shih tzu. Oh, a mastiff shih tzu. Yeah, not quite. He's a massive bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry. I want you to leave. What? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Sorry, Pat. Sorry, Lee. Um, I think we should go. Uh, it's interesting. It's, uh, uh, you know, where I grew up. It's uh, my parents' property. It's where I grew up. So it's been my childhood home. So it's really close to where I went to primary school. It's about a five-minute walk from where I went to primary school. So, at the recent federal election, I voted at my old primary school, which means I got to do something that doesn't make a difference <laughs> at the place where I was first told I'll never make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> which, is a, which is a pretty brutal thing to hear in a parent-teacher night. <laughs> uh, but my mum has since apologised. <laughs> I went to see my grandma today. I went to see Grandma, uh, you know, and she, she's doing really well. Uh, she, she, in two weeks, she turns 97 years old. Not bad, right? I mean, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> My mom asked me, are you coming to Grandma's 97th birthday? I said, I am if she is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bought a present, kept a receipt, you know? <laughs> Gotta be realistic, they don't call the nervous 90s for nothing. <laughs> I wanted to make it, don't get weird. I'm like, go grandma, come on Pamela. But uh, you know, I've got my fingers crossed and uh, well, so does she, that's mostly the arthritis. But <laughs> she's an amazing woman, my grandma. Uh, mentally she's really sharp, or everything's still there. She still drives, which not well, but she still does it. Yeah, she hasn't done a head check since John Howard. Um, <laughs> not because she physically can't, just because I mean, how old was her boy? You thought the world ended in 2020. The world ended for my grandma when that communist Kevin Rudd beat John Howard. That was it for her. She, had, she was like, this is over. I'm taking a few of you pricks with me. <laughs> 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 
She was, she was 82 years old. She didn't think she had another election cycle in her, right? But here we are in 2022. She told me if Albo won, she'd start driving at night again. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're around Mitchum after 6 p.m., be careful, because Pam's pissed, all right? Oh, uh, guys, you've been fun. Have a good one. Thank you very much. <laughs>
<laughs> we no need no words, nothing. But we understand one another. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please mark welcome to the stage, Justin McLean. Thanks, Marco. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, huge round of applause for Marco, the man who's put all this together. Lovely. Yeah, it's not bad, it's not bad. I see we've got a lot of couples in the audience, which is very nice, yeah. Funny thing about being a couple, if you, did you notice that like when you first started going out together, everything was so perfect, and it's only when you move in with someone that you find out about all their funny little habits. Like my wife, when she's doing the washing, she won't put socks in the same load as underwear. I just throw them all in together. Like, what's the worst that can happen? I get athlete's dick. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned before that, you know, I'm married and uh, my, my wife recently had her 40th birthday. And you girls can be funny about these sort of birthdays, can't you? You don't always look forward to these sort of milestones. And she wasn't, to be honest. And, and, and I said to her, no, no, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. I've never slept with a woman that old. <laughs> yeah, that was three months ago. I still haven't. I'm Justin McLean. Thank you very much. I'm going to welcome Marco back to the stage. Give him a huge round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll finish off with a, a family are inside the pub and uh, they're having a pub meal. So they're sitting back enjoying their, enjoying their feed and uh, the son had just come back from overseas. So uh, the son's talking about his adventures from overseas. He goes, oh, I went all over America, it was fantastic, had a great time, I went to some great pubs, went to some great clubs, I even went to a topless bar. And the mum goes, oh wow, how does that work? Do people get wet when it rains? <laughs> There it is, that's our mum joke. <laughs> we do it all here on Tell Us Another One. We've got mum jokes and dad jokes. Now you'll know, I've done my own choreography. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? There's a bit more later on. I'm not a new age chick. I like chicken, parmigiana, beer and dick. All those skinny bitches pose on Instagram. I like mac and cheese with ham. Couldn't give a shit. Get over it. Yesterday I tried to hide the credit card bill. Yes, I also lie. I went shoe shopping, girls. I know you go out drinking. The boys give you an alibi. But you know, if I leave, you'll have to heat up your own meat pie. I'm a chick, I'm an ocker, and I'm glad you like my knockers. Been round with all the lads, got six kids, all different dads. If you get up to pee, you can get your own BB. Bring me a bong, put on your thongs and walk away. I'm richer than you think. I am. I've got six kids on Centrelink. It's good wicket. I've got stretch marks like a zebra. My tits, they touch the floor. My jeans give me a muffin top. You couldn't ask for more. I'm a chick, I'm a yobbo, and I'm leaving you for robo. Yes, I've got six kids, and I made some porno vids. When I'm drunk, I like to twerk. I don't want to go to work, you know you wouldn't want me any other way. Here comes the Corrie. <laughs> me twerking. Honest to God, I jiggle more here than I do here. It's a saggy skin. Twerking was not invented by or for white middle-aged women. Just when you think you've got me figured out, I get my period. Sometimes I cry, I don't even know why. Just bring me the Tim Tams. I'm a chick. I'm a Sheila, I get shit based on tequila. When I'm horny, I'm on top. But you've got Foster's flop, got a tramp stamp tattoo. I reckon it'll do you, no, you wouldn't want me any other way. 
I'm a chick, I'm an ocker, and I'm glad you like my knockers. Been round with all the lads, got six kids, all different dads. When you get up to pee, you can get your own VB. Bring me a bomb, put on your thongs and walk away. That's the end of the song, folks. Thank you very much. You've been an amazing audience. That's, uh, that brings our show to a close. So, uh, big round of applause for our lovely audience coming out and uh, supporting our show. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, we are also doing a charity fundraiser. So, I've got a uh, tin over here if you guys can kindly donate to the Heart Kids. Uh, really appreciate that. Uh, we're raising funds for them. I uh, actually do magic shows. So, I'm actually a magician when I'm not doing this or carpentry. And uh, I, I do a couple of events there uh, twice a year for the Heart Kids when they, uh, when they have their events. And uh, it's, a, it's a charity really close to my heart as well. Excuse uh, the pun. But, uh, you know, I've got, a, I've, got a, <laughs> I've, got a, I've got an auntie who actually had open heart surgery as a child. And uh, she was probably, before the charity started, maybe one of the first heart kids. Uh, there's one in five kids born with congenital heart disease. It's a big number. Uh, I've got uh, my father, one of uh, eight brothers. Every single one of them all have heart conditions or died very early. Uh, my wife and my son as well, they've got arterial fibrillation, which is a heart condition. So uh, it runs pretty strong in my family and it's a support I love. Hope you guys can help out and support tonight. That'd be really good. And uh, my auntie can't be here tonight because uh, she got elbowed in the nose. So uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, she's doing well. She's doing well. All right, guys. So that's it for our show. Uh, hope you had a great night. Tell your friends. Tell your family. And uh, enjoy. Thank you. <laughs>